After round six, the verdict is in. Welcome, everyone. Matt Thompson alongside Match Review Panel Chairman Mark Fraser. Well, we begin with the incident that got everyone talking on Friday night. Justin Kaczynski charged with striking as expected. A three-week ban down to two with an early plea. It's been judged intentional, medium impact and high contact, Mark. Yeah, in this instance, you see Elliot try to run around Kaczynski who sticks out uh, his elbow and strikes Elliot to the head. Um, this caused him to go to ground and he's taken from the, the field. Um, the incident's happened off ball, so um, we consider that more intentional in nature. Um, and uh, the medical and what you could see from the, the video, um, we deemed that was a, a medium impact. So, um, yeah, got him the, the couple of weeks. I guess the, the line ball call is whether or not it's reckless or intentional, but you say in this case it was pretty clear cut. Yeah, well, uh, since um, we had a, an incident a few years ago um, with uh, Campbell Brown um, being, we deem that reckless, we've changed that now so that those sort of incidents are more intentional. All right, so that's uh, pretty straight up and down as far as Justin Kijinski is concerned. All right, second up, Carlton's Jared Waite. In his first game back in the side, charged with headbutting Melbourne's Tom McDonald. He can accept a one-match suspension with an early plea. Now, if he fights at the tribe and loses, it'll be a two-match ban. This has been judged intentional, low impact and high contact. Yeah, here with this one you see um, Wade and McDonald looking at each other and then uh, Wade plants his feet and drives through them to make the, the high contact and the, the head contact um, to McDonald. Um, we uh, don't think that that action um, is uh, particularly great. Um, it has the potential to cause um, a serious injury and so we think that's worthy of a charge. No doubt a, a bad look. I don't think anyone would deny that. But the, the critics of you are going to say, this is a bit soft. But, but you say that's absolutely not the case. Yeah, um, and with these, uh, as I said, you can certainly have the potential to cause major injury. A head contact and head clash, as we've seen in the past, can do major damage. So with this, um, an intentional head uh, contact like that, we think that's w worthy of a report. Yep, and obviously you then go to the points table and that's what comes up with the suspension, which uh, on the face of it, I mean, he's risking two matches if he goes to the tribunal and fights. It's, it's a very harsh penalty, but that's the what the points table has in place. And that's the way the system works, yes. All right, two other charges from the weekend. Not surprisingly, Joel Selwood and Chris Newman, they were both fined for wrestling. Another incident that's been looked at, no action on this one though, is involving Hawthorne's Lance Franklin and Adelaide's Andy Otten. Now you say a 50 metre penalty was enough for this one. Yeah, with this one you see uh, Franklin and Otten uh, go up for the mark. Um, obviously Otten takes the mark, but you see Franklin's hands down on the ball. Their momentum carries them down and you, you see um, Otten sort of, uh, unfortunately, um, with the head contact there by Franklin. Um, we believe that it's not intentional in nature from Franklin. Um, his hands are down on the ball there as they fall to ground and it's the momentum that's caused the, the contact. Yeah, it's just that last little bit at the end where, you know, he was perhaps on the verge of being in a headlock that's got people talking today. I mean, do you think that there could have been the potential for, for this uh, for serious injury here if that contact had have been exacerbated, or do you think that Franklin kind of stopped at the right time? Well, it's not a matter of stopping. Um, with that, we don't think that he's tried to grab him round the neck. We think that the hands are down there onto the ball, and then the momentum of both players has carried the, them down and obviously put um, Ottens into that position. So we don't think that that's uh, an action from Franklin's behalf that's um, worthy of any report. Yeah, but obviously the 50-metre penalty. But the 50-metre penalty for the high contact, yes. All right, one more incident to look at as well. Fremantle's Lee Spur bumping Gold Coast's Carmichael Hunt. You looked at this one. Was it OK? Um, yeah, touch late, obviously, um, but uh, the intention sort of obviously um, is with that one. He's um, got the, the ball in a mark, comes through, and there's only one step between the, the mark and the contact. So we think that the, that, while a little bit late, um, is not worthy of a report at all, and the, the umpire's um, sorted out on the day. Yep, all right. There you go. Carmichael Hunt and Lee Spurt. Mark, thank you very much for that. Appreciate it. No worries, mate. Mark Fraser with us, the chairman of the Match Review Panel. Now, the players charged have until 11 o'clock tomorrow morning to decide whether they'll accept or fight their charges at the tribunal. We have a full text report on all of the incidents looked at this week here online. For now, from all of us at afl.com.au, thanks for watching.